In this video we are going to take a closer look at the unique army rule of the Death Watch, the kill teams, and whether GW managed to implement them well enough in 10th edition. In the first part we will go through the relevant rules and interactions, highlighting both strengths and weaknesses of the kill teams. In the second part we will then look at what this potentially means for the Death Watch and what could be done to improve them over the course of the edition. Lastly, there will be a quick wrap up of what has been covered. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. Before we dive into the kill teams themselves, a quick word on the interaction between the Black Spear Task Force Detachment and kill teams. With the differentiation between Space Marine chapters and detachments, GW has introduced an interesting new concept in 10th edition. For the Death Watch specifically, while the Black Spear Task Force is the detachment of the Death Watch, we are by no means limited to playing it, we could pick the Gladius Task Force detachment from the vanilla Space Marine Index instead, and in all likelihood, the upcoming Space Marine Codex will introduce additional options. In turn, one could pick the Black Spear Task Force detachment, but not include any Death Watch exclusive data sheets whatsoever, aka no kill teams, and instead just draw from the vanilla Space Marine data sheets instead. Having said that, the usage of kill teams, or rather the kill team keyword, is encouraged through a simple yet effective rules tweak on the detachment exclusive stratagems. 5 out of the 6 stratagems can be used on up to 2 kill teams at the same time or on a single non-kill team unit instead. I think this puts us into the excellent position of being able to benefit from actually running kill teams in the death watch but not being shoehorned into playing exclusively kill teams, like for instance what happened back in the days with our kill team strike force, where our most powerful rule set locked us out of the majority of the space marine models. This is the kind of simplified but not simple that I personally like to see from GW's side. Having said that, when it comes to our kill teams themselves, I think here the situation becomes a bit more difficult. Recently, I did a full kill team guide series, covering all of our different kill teams. If you have not checked them out already, the links are in the description. In a nutshell, while at first glance we may have kept our original kill teams from 9th edition, a combination of rules changes in 10th edition has a significant impact on all of them. I would summarize them as following. First, far more restrictive unit compositions. Second, fixed points combined with free war gear. And third, the changes to battle line or what formerly used to be the troops battlefield role. Starting with the unit compositions itself, I think this is the one that is currently holding our kill teams back the most. Contrary to 9th edition, where we could add up to 5 of whatever could be added past the initial troop stacks, we are now more often than not limited to 2 per model only and 4 if lucky. This is particularly infuriating as it seems to lack consistency. For instance, a Proteus kill team can get up to 4 Terminators, which are quite powerful models by all means, but then an Indomitor can only get up to 2 Aggressors for that matter. From a balanced perspective, this seems odd, and while I am aware that GW made some questionable decisions based on what is being sold in their actual boxes, well, pretty much all the models they restricted to only 2 come in boxes of 3, so there goes that. This not only heavily limits us in terms of how we can run each of these kill teams, for the primaries ones in particular, there are just very few possible combinations in the first place, but it also puts the additional risk of neutering the competitiveness of a kill team the moment one of the data sheets involved becomes obsolete. To give a practical example, should GW at some point nerf Inceptors beyond playability, then there won't be any way left for the Indometer to compensate for that, because we are limited to 2 Aggressors and 2 Eradicators only. 
With a higher limit for each unit, one could then fill up with more of either. This also further ties into the second topic, the matter of points, where the fixed points for kill teams are further narrowing down the unit compositions. As it currently stands, there is a single best way to run each of them in terms of models, which is a huge step back from 9th edition, where we used to have far more variety on how these kill teams were actually built. The reason for this is that the points values are calculated based on the average of the more powerful models and I guess the option of free war gear, which means if we are not going for these specific models, we would end up overpaying, or in case of the Proteus skill team, where we always overpay, we would have to do even more so. At 5 models only, it becomes even worse, where basically the inflated price of the 10-man unit is simply half, but without the access to the more powerful models to compensate for this. This results in an absurd situation, where 5 Deathwatch veterans cost 100 points, but 5 Deathwatch veterans of a minimum size Proteus skill team cost 165 for arguably worse rules. Then lastly, with kill teams not counting as battle line, we are stuck with the rule of 3 and we are seeing a major shift from 9th edition where basically kill teams were our bread and butter units. On that matter, I am personally a bit disappointed that GW did not follow up on their 9th edition ways of boosting troops, like making them much better at mission play, but instead focused far too much on just bring whatever you want instead. While not a Deathwatch specific complaint of mine, I would of course have liked to see Kill Team still tying into that, and in case this ever gets changed in a later mission pack, having us benefit from it. With the relevant rules and interactions covered, what does this mean for the Deathwatch? Well, I would argue that we are far less spoiled for choice than we used to be. Back in 9th edition, arguably all four kill teams were viable, with each having at least two vastly different ways to run them, and even though the forest kill team in particular struggled for much of the edition, they did have their play, especially at the beginning and the end of the edition. Back in my Kill Team series for 10th edition, I only rated the Proteus and the Indometer Kill Team as highly competitive, with the Spectres having some potential yet costly play, and the 40s being a long way from being playable at all. As it currently stands, I would personally rate Kill Team Cassius above the 40s, its rules are just that unfavorable. Now, from what we currently know, GW has announced that they will prioritize points balancing over major rules changes, meaning that the Monitorum Field Manual is now quarterly and the balance status late is twice a year only. As a result, this potentially means that a faction is stuck with its set of rules for longer, for better or worse. While the next Monitorum Field Manual could potentially address the kill team points values, which I think is an absolute must, especially for the 5-man version, it will not fundamentally change unit compositions. They remain limited, and in case of the 4-is kill team, generally unfavorable. I addressed this back in my guide to the 4 scale team, but it does not hurt to say it once again, GW has to move away from using intercessors as the base tags as they are, unless they are unlocking full access to long witch hill weapons for all the mandatory 5 models involved. But anyway, bottom line here is that the limit for adding models needs to go back up to 4 to 5 models in order to keep kill teams as future proof as possible over the entirety of the edition. With the Space Marine Codex on the horizon, this will be the first real test for kill teams, because both rules and points are now entirely independent from the regular data sheets, so keep in mind that even if a model gets a rules update or a decrease in points, unless we get an update to our kill team points or data sheets as well, we just won't have it unless we are running the original unit outside of kill teams. All in all, if there was a bit of a negative twist to this episode, it is because I think that GW slightly missed the mark with kill teams. It's not that they are unplayable, but that I feel like the simplified but not simple has gotten the better of them. On the other hand, I don't think that it needs much overall. 
re-evaluation of kill team points values, increasing the unit limits and re-evaluating battle line and we would be quite there. A war gear revision would be the cherry on top at that point. Having said all that, while the upcoming Space Marine Codex might not do all that much for kill teams by the look of it, there is always hope for our own Codex or supplement, or whatever it will be. Ultimately, let's not forget that the Deathwatch in 9th edition only really kicked off when they added the kill team strike force, and that was quite a while into the edition. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at the unique army rule of the Death Watch, the kill teams, and whether GW managed to implement them well enough in 10th edition. While I am hugely in favor of how they implemented the Black Spear Task Force detachment as a whole, and of course its interaction with kill teams, I personally feel that the kill teams themselves have fallen a bit short when compared to 9th edition. While I have covered each of them in more detail in a dedicated guide, I would summarize the core issues for all of them as following. Far too restrictive unit compositions, the negative impact of fixed points for kill teams, as well as the abandonment of kill teams as battle line units, and the advantages this used to bring in the previous edition. While kill teams are by no means unplayable, and I personally consider both the Proteus as well as the Indomitor kill team as highly competitive, I think we are ending up with a far too narrow selection of what is supposed to be our unique army rule. Basically, there is a single best way to run each kill team now, and not even all of them will make it into the more competitive lists, which is most unfortunate and a huge step back from the previous edition. The complete separation of points and rules from the regular datasheets also means that the upcoming Space Marine Codex might largely bypass kill teams, unless GW for once commits to keeping the Deathwatch rules updated as the edition progresses, something that we have been sincerely lacking over the course of 9th. All in all, I think it is a narrow miss rules wise, with a re-evaluation of kill team points values, increasing the unit limits and adding back battle line being my personal suggestions for improvement in order to keep them more future proof over the course of the edition. So that's it for my take on whether GW got the kill teams right or not in 10th edition. What do you guys think about our kill teams and which ones are you running in your current lists? Any predictions for what the Space Marine Codex will do for us? And any hopes for our own upcoming new set of rules at some point during the edition? Let me know in the comments. Then finally, if you made it this far and I still have your attention, if you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. For that, I have both a coffee as well as a Patreon page, links are in the description. Furthermore, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. As always, thank you very much for watching guys. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.